Hey class, today's uh, lesson is going to look at uh, meiosis genetics and heredity part two. What we're going to do is really focus on this thing called the Punnett square. It's going to be your best friend, I guarantee it, all right? Uh, and that's going to help predict possible outcomes of genetic crosses and uh, continue to talk about the variation that meiosis creates in a species. So to begin with, let's look at three reasons why you're not exactly like uh, your parents or why why we aren't just like our parents. Uh, if we come from their DNA, then how come we're not exactly the same? Uh, why aren't our brothers and sisters the same as us? If it's a combination of both our parents and our parents are the same, then why aren't we the same as our brothers and sisters? Um, so there's a couple of reasons. We'll keep them simple. There's there's a lot more reasons, I should say, than what's going to be on here, but let's, let's cover these. And meiosis actually increases genetic variety and genetic diversity. All right. Um, how does it do this? Uh, homologous chromosomes exchange genetic information when crossing over. So we know that. Uh, by crossing over occurring, it never happens really in the same way. Uh, so different DNA is kind of swapped between the two homologous chromosomes. Uh, and because of that, we get some unique combinations of DNA and traits. Uh, also, homologous chromosomes line up in the middle of cells in a random order. So when we do that in metaphase, um, they're they're kind of arranging themselves in a random way and anytime we have any DNA moving in a random fashion uh, we're gonna get some new diversity we need to do a little bit of history here and talk about the father of genetics before we move into using Punnett squares uh, the father of genetics uh, Gregor Mendel uh, Austrian monk uh, in the 19th century uh, researched pea plants and saw how those pea plants uh, differed in a lot of different traits and we'll talk about a couple of those but he noticed that from generation to generation these pea plants that were crossed and could breed with each other um, and he would control that breeding in experiments uh, basically he noticed that uh, the offspring of these pea plants were not always the same and they had different traits and he wondered why and this kind of crafted our modern day idea of heredity so a lot of what we look at is going to be simple heredity but it has to deal with the idea of these things called alleles. So more vocabulary for you. An allele is a different type of the same gene. All right, so different type of the same gene. They're in the same part of the chromosome, uh, and we have a diagram down here for an allele. So let's take this picture as an example. An allele for purple flowers and an allele for uh, white flowers are found in the same spot on the same homologous pair of chromosomes. So some individuals for the gene of color for a flower would have purple and others would have the gene for the color of white. Uh, the gene is the same gene that's for the color of the flower. There are different versions or types of it. So you have two alleles for each trait, one from each parent. All right. Uh, the next thing we'll get into is that there are different combinations then. And we start giving them these little letters to abbreviate it. So you're going to see here, homozygous dominant. Homozygous dominant means that you have two of the same dominant alleles. All right. Here, we've abbreviated it for purple is the dominant color. Um, and we'll get that vocab in just a second. So it gets a capital P. Since it's homozygous, that means there are two capital P's. They're the same. Heterozygous, always know that heterozygous is different. They're different. There's one of each. Uh, so we have heterozygous. Uh, we have a, a big P and a small P. Um, so one represents a purple allele and one represents a white allele. And then here we have homozygous recessive. That tells us both alleles are going to be the same. Since they're the recessive ones, they get, they're represented with small letters, and they're two small Ps, so two recessive alleles. To finish with this kind of vocab and the alleles, make a little more sense here, uh, what we're looking at here is we're going to look at some of those terms we were just talking about, dominant, recessive, and then add in phenotype and genotype. A dominant allele is one that will hide a recessive allele. Our example of dominant allele, we'll continue with the same one, is a purple flower. So we're going to represent that with a capital P, and uh, the recessive allele is a white flower, 
and that is represented with the lowercase p. Anytime you have a dominant allele and a recessive allele together, we would call that heterozygous, uh, we, are, we still see the purple color of the flower. All right, recessive alleles can only be shown um, when you get a recessive allele from both parents. So only homozygous recessive uh, genotypes uh, can be expressed as white flowers in this case. So what we're going to see in this uh, diagram here are these purple flowers and then look at what they're made up of. So this is a homozygous dominant two capital P's purple flower and it's purple. Right? That makes sense. It got only purple alleles. This one is heterozygous. It gets a purple allele and it gets the white allele. But remember, the purple is dominant over the white one, so it covers that white one up and all we see is purple. Uh, in this one, we see the same thing. All right, it's the exact same. And then down here, we see two uh, small P alleles, which are white recessive alleles. Those white recessive alleles can then be seen as a white flower because there are two of them. Um, the vocabulary we need to add in there is phenotype and genotype. A phenotype is a trait that is expressed or visible. All right, so it's what we see in this case. These are your phenotypes over here. Three of these had the phenotype of purple. Remember, they weren't all the same. They didn't all get to be purple the same way, uh, but they're all purple nonetheless. And then the genotype is this right over here. Um, so now we can look at the genotype as something different. We have two homozygous dominant, we have a heterozygous, and we have a homozygous recessive. Those would be the genotypes. So these are all the possible genotypes present. And remember over here are all the phenotypes. So we can show you how this can be uh, kind of constructed so we can get these odds uh, put together and calculated and worked out in class so we can kind of make predictions about what a future cross may look like. Uh, our example is in this one with purple flowers once again, sticking with the same idea, is to do what we'd call a monohybrid cross. Mono meaning one. Uh, what we're going to do is look at just one trait and follow it through. So I'll use a white for this to add in there. Cross involving one trait. Uh, remember, uh, we, first thing we need to know is we need to know what both parents are. Uh, so let's say that both parents are heterozygous. So what does that mean? Remember that means there's a dominant allele and a recessive allele together. So both parents are going to have that. Yeah, each individual has two alleles. So what do we do? The possible alleles from, let's say, the father or one parent, it doesn't really matter where you put them, but you can try to be consistent if you want. We put here and we split up in this little 4x4 four four grid. So we have the big P and the small P here, and then the alleles from the mother or the other parent go here, a big P and small P here. What you do is you start to fill these in, so drop them down. So I'm going to bring this, I'm going to drop this down here, and they're going to put a big P right here. And then this P I'll bring over as well into this box, and that's also a big P. Good. All right. Now we move to the next one. Continue to drop this P all the way down. We get a big P here. And then this one is not a big one. It's a little one. And make sure when you do these, you actually try to write them little, so you remember. So we get a little P there. Now we continue over into the next side. Bring this big P over. And we always try to write the dominant one first, and then this little p down. And then finally, we have a little p to bring over and a little p to bring down. So try to write the dominant one first if you can. Uh, it makes it easier to stay consistent, and then the recessive allele next to it. And we're just constantly bringing these over and down uh, into the uh, squares until we get them uh, set up. Uh, and filled up here. Uh, what we then have are the possible offspring. So what we're looking at is a possible offspring of each. 
Uh, our genotypes, remember, are the allele combinations, so they're the actual little letter combinations we came up with. And then the phenotypes are what we actually can see. So what we'll do is look at phenotypes first, it's a little easier. Uh, we've got a purple pen here, we'll see how this looks, and we'll go through it. So we're going to identify all that are purple. According to what I have down here is that three-fourths or 75% are going to be purple. So you look at this one. Uh, a dominant purple allele and a dominant purple allele together passed on to this child, uh, this offspring is definitely going to be purple. All right. This one, a dominant P allele and a white uh, recessive allele, uh, still purple, right? Because the dominant's getting covering up the recessive. We have the same thing here, still purple. And then down here, we have two white recessive alleles. Uh, that's the one where we're getting the only combination of white. There. So three out of four are going to be purple flowers, one would be a white flower, 25% chance. Uh, genotypes are different. You just Genotype, you basically pull out the different combinations there. So what was one combination we had? Two big P's, homozygous dominant. Well, there was only one of them. That was right here. So one out of four or 25% chance. And then we have heterozygous. Well, how many heterozygous ones were there? Well, there's one and there's one. All right. So it's two out of four, 50%. And then two small p's, homozygous recessive. It's only one of them, one out of four, 25%. Uh, those, your, those genotypes possible are here and the odds can be written in a percent and that's just fine.